chasing the police every single day. All right, Levi Trumbull reporting in Frederick, Maryland. We have some extraordinarily breaking news. Uh, the time right now is currently 11.57 p.m. Sean Porter came over here uh, at night. We have some, this is, we're currently standing in my living room at my house. We have news that is just insane. So I'm gonna walk you back about two, three, four hours ago how my evening went. So tomorrow uh, at 8 a.m. in the Frederick District Court, I had plans to attend a peace order hearing that involved one of Charlotte Often Brink's uh, ex-boyfriends and herself. Uh, she filed a peace order against this gentleman. And uh, of course, she is a public figure. She is the well-known owner of Dan's Restaurant and Tap House, uh, who has created a lot of headlines, including the Daily Mail and Fox News. So uh, I have been covering that situation as well. And one of the things that has come up within the last 10 days is uh, Miss Oftenbrink has filed, she has filed four criminal complaints. I have them all right here. I was reviewing the four criminal complaints plus the one application for a peace order that she has filed against different individuals over the last 10 days. Well, as I was reviewing all my notes and checking the court schedule, making sure that everything uh, was still set to uh, commence tomorrow morning at the Frederick District Court, as I was reviewing notes, reviewing all the application for statement of charges that she's filed against ex-boyfriends and peace orders that she's filed against ex-boyfriends, as I have been scouring all that information, I noticed something in something really interesting come up at the last second, and that was the following. June 22nd, 2023, case number D111CR23-00068, State of Maryland versus Sean Porter. We have a new filed today criminal complaint against Sean Porter in the Frederick County District Court on six misdemeanor charges. Those charges are charge one, harassment uh, allegedly that took place on 6-7-23. Charge two, harassment that allegedly took place on 6-8-2023. Charge three, harassment that allegedly took place on 6-9-2023. Charge four, harassment that allegedly took place on 6-16-2023. Charge five, harassment that allegedly took place on 6-22-2023. And the sixth and final count, a misdemeanor charge for stalking that allegedly took place on 6-7-2023. So this right here makes the fifth, the fifth criminal complaint that Ms. Oftenbrink has filed in the last 10 days against various individuals, which also includes one peace order against an ex-boyfriend. So the first question, you got this news tonight, just as I did. It's I sort was of preparing for my testimony yes. tomorrow, and it's mm -hmm. clearly witness tampering. She knows that I'm a witness against her in two to three cases coming yeah. up shortly. Actually, sorry, three to four cases coming up here shortly. Yeah. So this landed like a ton of bricks, right, tonight. I mean, this sort of just landed. I was in the middle of reviewing all. This was the one thing I didn't think that I would be talking about tonight, anything like this. My first question, the, the question I want to ask you is, why are you even here tonight? Because well, this is, this is you're now a criminal defendant in this case. Here's... Why do you even want to talk about this? I'm an unserved, unscheduled, unappeared, criminal, potential criminal defendant. So mm -hmm. what ha has to happen is, is it's going to get scheduled. There's going to be a, uh, a hearing where you come in and say, they say, get a lawyer. See you later. And then it goes to the state's attorney's office and they start working it up and they realize that um, my witnesses in this case are going to cause every judge to be recused and it's going to necessitate um, a special prosecutor to be assigned because of the witnesses. Uh, I can't even discuss it. It's just so, this is the most ridiculous thing ever, and it's actually going to be the biggest scandal that's ever happened in Western Maryland with all the false statements that were made uh, simply to intimidate and stop me from, from testifying. Uh, this is in response to not only me testifying and announcing that I'm going to be at court tomorrow, but also a video I posted of Charlotte uh, blaming me for her electricity going in and out, her Wi-Fi going in and out, and um, also for... Um, you know, thinking someone's in her backyard and she's telling this sheriff deputy all these things and her restaurant's getting phone calls. Oh my God. Well, you know, people didn't like her restaurant. They complained. That's, that's America. Um, I have never disclosed her address. I have never disclosed her phone number, even though she is a person who gives interviews as recently as five days ago or six days ago to the Herald Mail. She's quoted in the Herald Mail. She sought them out to, and I believe make false statements about a restaurant claiming the reason it closed was mounting legal fees. But from what I understand, the insurance company, the general liability insurance company is paying for her defense for free. 
free. And then she's run around asking for money for her legal defense. And then from what I have seen, it looks like she spent $16,000 on a Taylor Swift concert and some other stuff. But basically, she's announced she's running for Congress. And then somehow announced she's also running for House of Delegates. There's these posts on this Maryland political site. Um, she did her first interview in 2020 regarding Black Lives Matter. And that was with a political podcaster called uh, A Minor Detail. That's the website. And long story short, she has sought out the media attention every chance she got. UK Daily Mail, front cover, New York Post, Fox News. She's all over the place. She's very well known. Um, she is a public figure. She doesn't have any sort of right to privacy when she's acting completely insane and attacking every single person who reports on her. Uh, the funny thing is, every single one of those dates is a date I published a video on YouTube. So publishing videos on YouTube covering factual events is actually considered harassment in the eyes of Miss Oftenbrink. So the next thing I want to talk about is you have, she evidently convinced this district court commissioner, and again, it's not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a mountain to try to convince a commissioner, but evidently she, this Michelle Friedberg, this is the judicial officer, the district court commissioner who filed these charges tonight against you, these, these six counts. My question is, is you haven't seen the charging document yet. And quite frankly, I haven't either yet. Yeah, it's not really I, I, out there it's yet. Not, it's in no. process. Basically, um, the standards for filing charges are minimal because they don't want to discourage people from attempting to get justice if mm -hmm. they were in fact victims. But what she does, from what I've observed directly, um, is that she pretends she's a victim and she just acts and acts and acts. And oh, oh, go fund me page because my restaurant was closed down due to our misconduct. Uh, your customers stopped coming, so you didn't have the money to operate. And it appears that they knew they were closing back in January and I didn't even protest until February 25th. So, and then she goes around blaming me for uh, her business's failure when what it was is she just kicked out like half the town because they had different political beliefs than her or they, they sent back food that, you know, they weren't polite to the the wait staff, so they just started kicking out people, including a circuit court judge who was banned for life, and a local well-respected businessman who's now suing Charlotte Oftenbrink uh, and others, as well as her business and her business's insurance policy, for $800,000 for defamation of character for lying. She also hired a PR firm to attack myself and every other person in the town that spoke up about the restaurant. Um, she paid thousands of dollars to call my disabled son retarded and inbred and talk about KKK, and she actually conspired to label everyone who was in the press and in the Republican Party as well, just for good measure, as different ranking members of the Ku Klux Klan. And this is all stuff that we can back up in court. So these six charges, and again, I'll just read the dates right now, 6 7 6 8 6 9 6 16 6 22, and another uh, date for 6 7. Yep. You think you can identify without even seeing this document? I looked at I the dates either. of my YouTube posts, and what they match mean perfectly. The dates are, I reported on Charlotte Oftenbrink defaming and slandering everyone and hiring a PR firm to do so. And it's funny because I covered every single story was her lying to either lying to dispatchers or, you know, in my opinion, lying to police, making false statements, um, you know, saying that I'm responsible for stuff that I can't possibly be responsible for, like messing with her Internet during a rainstorm. I mean, it's just she's clearly lost her mind. She has sued an ex-boyfriend that she thought was running her mouth. She filed criminal charges, not sued criminal charges and a peace order against that guy. Mm -hmm. And that was for um, I think it was like a Twitter post that wasn't even about her, didn't have her name in it. She thought that was criminal harassment. And then she filed against another more recent uh, ex-boyfriend. Uh, she actually got a protective order. You missed one. It's not in the system. You didn't see it. She got a protective order against her most recent boyfriend and a whole bunch of criminal charges, like two assault charges and a harassment mm -hmm. charge. Uh, and from what I gather, based on what I know, it's all horse crap. Mm -hmm. But this is going to be the biggest scandal in Western Maryland. And by the way, we have every single post she has ever made, every defamatory statement ever made. It's all been saved. We have everything. So she's going to have an uphill battle trying to prove that she's not just witness tampering here in multiple different cases in two different counties, Frederick and Washington County. So one of the things that I want to ask you about, and I guess this is you just take this however you want to. So prior to today, there is four criminal complaints plus one, plus one filed peace order. That's four yesterday. As of today, within the past 10 days, we now have a fifth criminal complaint, that being yours. What is going on this month? So she's crazy, in my opinion. And again, I'm no doctor, to quote my attorney. Well, one of them. Um, but in my opinion, she's crazy. And she literally files criminal charges against anyone she thinks is talking behind her back or laughing at her in front of her back. But the funny thing is, is I have thousands of people laughing at her online every hour right now. And um, those videos will not be taken down because they are protected by the First Amendment. They are newsworthy stories. And they are about a person who is... A public figure like from the word go trying to run for political office and thinking that somehow anyone that disagrees with her she can just go after and bully i cannot be bullied at all the other people she's going after scared to death i'm going to fight this thing tooth and nail i don't care what it takes uh freedom of the press will prevail if this was a private citizen that didn't give interviews all the time and didn't post you know all over uh, different political sites and talk about running for office and didn't hire a pr firm to attack people and did not 
recently uh, make comments in the, the Herald Mail, um, you know, then she would have a little bit more protection. It still wouldn't be harassment. She literally thinks she can intimidate everybody. And some other people may get intimidated, but I'm ready to fight. Um, this is kind of what I live for, standing up for freedom of speech. And it's basically, she's trying to use the legal system in a concept called prior restraint, which is when you use the government to stop publications that you know are coming. So she knows that she's being reported on and she knows that there's story after story after story after story after story after story coming for all these different court cases that she has, these high profile court cases with high profile uh, uh, public figures that are also involved in these court cases. And she doesn't want that coverage. So she went after a guy who was covering it. What she doesn't realize is there's like six guys behind me dying to take my place and I've already called all of them. Do you expect the state to actually pursue this? Well, we haven't seen it yet. I you mean, haven't, I haven't, not at least until I'll just try to get it tomorrow, see if I can find it at the court. But I mean, it might, it might be you, updated. It might, um, yeah. It's going to take a while before I get will. served. It will. Um, but what happens is mm -hmm. um, the state's going to look at it. And if they want to fight it, that's their deal. If they don't want to fight it, that's their deal. But I'm going to court. I'm not, I'm not backing down. I have the right to publish. And every single one of these dates, the, the earliest one is actually on the day that Six, we did the interview. That would be the yeah. 7th of this month. Yep. Because, um, one. because her PR guy kept coming after my kid and my family and calling me an inbred and an incel, which is involuntarily celibate and all this other stuff. And what's funny is she has a four page letter coming from my attorney. So that'll probably be hitting tomorrow or Saturday, maybe Monday. It's, it's, mm. I know it was sent out on Tuesday and the mail is kind of slow here. Um, but one thing I did want to state is none of this is going to stop me from testifying. You cannot threaten or intimidate Sean Porter from testifying. I'm absolutely going to go after this. She's trying to gag everybody that could say anything bad about her and hurt her chance for a political run for office for a 2024 election cycle, which is what the two posts we have, one for House of Delegates and one for Congress, um, they both mentioned 2024. So that's what she's shooting for. So that means she has to clean up her, her act right now. And with the YouTube video that I posted today, there's no one that's going to vote for her. I mean, she clearly is out of her mind and Sean Porter this. And the cop goes in the basement looking for Sean Porter and then goes upstairs looking for Sean Porter. Uh, and he was in the backyard beforehand looking for Sean Porter. So you're, you're, you're unfazed. No, when absolutely not. That, this okay. is making me, um, not only am I going to testify, um, I am going to spend great effort to make sure I recall every detail as well as I can. I'm going to get good sleep before all the different uh, upcoming uh, cases with these other individuals. It's all intertwined. And basically, it involves a lot of people in the legal system in Frederick County and mm -hmm. in Washington County that are involved in this. I'm not naming names or anything like that, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause mass recusals from the state's attorney's office standpoint and from the judicial standpoint. So you're going to have visiting judges and you're going to have um, you know, special prosecutors assigned to this. I haven't seen the document, you haven't seen the document, but I will be tomorrow morning. I will be covering the peace order hearing in the district court. I'll be there. And if we, you know, one of the d difficult things for me right now is, is I'm asking you about an application of statement of charges mm -hmm. that I haven't even seen yet, haven't yeah. even read yet, but maybe I will tomorrow, maybe not. But, but if I do have more information this time tomorrow, because I'm going to be there. Well, I mean, I don't know if- I'm Oh, I'm going to go. Okay, yeah. I'm waiting to be so, served a uh, peace yeah. order. Okay. Um, but a peace order does not uh, keep me from showing up to court to testify. So you kind of fucked up there, Charlotte. Um, I'm still going to be testifying against you. And right. there's no way you can escape and the media coverage because you just multiplied it by like 50. She waited until today, the day before I'm to testify, to file charges. Mm -hmm. She didn't do this on the 7th when I put up the interview or whatever, which you videotaped and edited. Yeah, at no point in time did she file until there was a video today that made her look completely unfit for office. Mm -hmm. And um, it was police evidence, police body camera. It's public record and it's of a public figure. And it is not illegal to disseminate that to other members of the public. Uh, it is a public record. So good luck with that. Yeah, well, I will be covering it. There are a lot of complaints here. I have gone through a lot of this material just tonight. Um, but if by tomorrow I have more information, we will obviously be in communication to to talk about what is what is alleged. So. Very good, and we, as always, we will treat Charlotte in the situation fair as well. I will say that not a lot of people would have come at midnight to talk about a, uh, a criminal case in which they have not even seen the charges yet, but you sure did. You got on it, and uh, not a lot of people would have done that, so uh, you, you have stones for that alone. So, Sean Porter, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Absolutely.